Welcome to the Awakened Goddess Show, your source for inspiration, wisdom, and personal discovery. The place to learn from a diverse mix of mentors, metaphysical experts, spiritual leaders, and best-selling authors from around the world. I'm your host, Angela Wilkinson. Join me as I explore the minds of my masterful guests while they share powerful insights and easy-to-use tools you can start using right away. Now, let's tap into the energy of the Awakened Goddess and be enlightened by today's guest. Well, hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Awakened Goddess Show, where we co-create powerful, conscious conversations on the leading edge. And today I have returning guest, Alexis Pierce. And I'm so excited this for today. I'm, now I'm not even, my words are like not coming out of my mouth. <laughs> but today is like the 200th episode. And woohoo! <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. I cannot believe it. After what four years? Let's see, 2014, whatever that is. It's been a long journey, and so <laughs> you know, I think this is the perfect conversation that we're going to have today because, um, quite honestly, when you and I talked, Alexis, um, this was well. Let me just say, if you have not watched this episode, uh, it was episode 107, and we talked about money shame. And for me, that was, I think, a big catalyst, a huge turning point for me, because you and I, we really dove into this conversation and had a really revealing conversation about, you know, our personal journey with money. So that's a long introduction. So welcome. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. And congratulations on your 200th episode. I'm so excited I get to celebrate it with you here. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Yeah, so I just want to dive in because money shame and shame in general is, um, it's a huge topic. And I think that uh, so many of us take on this, this, this whole thing about shame, and we make it about ourselves. And we, we tell ourselves stories about ourselves. And we, um, really try to keep that in the shadow. Like we have things about ourselves, whether it's money, our, our relationships, our bodies, um, that we feel not so great about. And so we try to hide that. And, um, you know, I know you work a lot with shame and, uh, So anytime we're, we're teaching something, clearly we have gone through it ourselves. (laughs) So let's kind of rewind and, um, talk about the last episode, the last conversation we had, uh, because, well, I'll let you tell this story. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I actually had forgotten this story until I rewatched the episode and Angela and I connected because I had made a post in a, in a private group that we're both jointly in that has a couple thousand people nowadays. Yeah. Um, and I had made a post back in 2016 that said, I have something like, you know, 84 cents in my bank account or whatever it was. And less than a dollar. <laughs> yeah, it was less than a dollar. And I was so fed up of feeling like that was a secret that I needed to be ashamed of. And I was, and I didn't go back and read the post, but just hearing the conversation. And I remember that feeling like I'm, I'm tired of feeling like this number defines who I am. I'm tired of feeling like people see me one way. And so I have to show up wearing the mask of how they see me when my reality feels very different. Mm -hmm. And I'm tired of feeling like this means that I'm failing when it's really just a snapshot of a number in time. It doesn't mean that I wouldn't have more money before or more money after, but I was just so fed up of being upset with myself and all the weight that I let that number carry for me. And so I just posted it. I just posted it in a group and I was like, I just want to be seen in this, in this reality, in this moment. And so you and I connected and we had the conversation. It was, and it was funny, our conversation was two weeks later and my financial reality, or maybe it was a month later, but it was very different. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was still always going back to that zero point, always going back to that zero place, which keeps bringing up thoughts, right? It keeps bringing up thoughts of what's wrong with me. Why can't I ever get out of this? Why don't I know how to do this? But you know, and the amount doesn't matter because for you, it could be thousands of dollars to thousands in debt. Like, but we swing, we swing. And that's one of, I think, I'm learning the hallmarks of shame is this swinging from I'm on top of the world to I'm the worst and back and forth. 
Yeah, isn't that the truth? And and uh, it, I think it's a um, it's a huge journey that we have to go through that is that can be very painful. And when we had that conversation, um, I was talking, I was sharing things that I'd never shared about publicly, and um, I it, and it was interesting because before I had we had that conversation, there was a part of me that knew that I really needed to step into the light and share that. Mm -hmm. And that was going to relieve me from the burden I had been carrying. And it's so, it was so true because, you know, I taught, I shared about, um, making a purchase. I was, I had bought a rental property at the top of the market when, you know, all hell broke loose. And, uh, I ended up, going through two foreclosures on my house and on my, <laughs> on my rental property. And then thus I had to file bankruptcy. And so when I had to go through that process, I remember feeling so ashamed and, and, mm -hmm. and feeling like the world was crashing down around me. And how could I, how could I get myself in that position? And you know, and then, you know, the, the flood of the stories and the conversation of, you know, what I learned as a child and, and what these things meant. And so, you know, I was just beating myself up about this yeah. whole thing. And then once we had that conversation and I thank you so much for, you know, uh, us sharing that space and being able to have that conversation because it was such a turning point for me. And after we had that conversation, it really uh, it released, it unlocked that piece for me. Yeah. Oh, that's huge. <laughs> when, you know, it's funny because as you were talking, I was thinking, of course, of course, I see this in so many other areas of my life. I remember it's probably four or five years ago now. It was the day after Thanksgiving and I was coming into the yoga studio and one of my yoga clients said, oh, how was your Thanksgiving? And I looked at her straight in the face and I said, I sat alone in the kitchen and cried <laughs> because that's what I did that particular yeah. Thanksgiving. And I, I felt fine. It was my choice. I could have gone to family and friends. I chose to sit at home and just watch TV and cry. And she looks at me, not even a thought about me. She looks at me and goes, Oh, thank God. Because everybody said that I should take yoga because it would help me feel better. And it hasn't yet, but you're human too. <laughs> and like in that case, I understand shame, right? It was no big deal. I'm not ashamed of this, but when it comes to, well, whatever it is for you, for me, it was money for you it was money. We had this money. And so we're afraid to talk. We're afraid to open up our mouths about it and connect with people. And it's so isolating. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, we seem to have made internal assessments that I'm a good person if it's this way. And I'm a bad person if it's this way. So guess what? All of a sudden things go this way. And now we're like, wait, does this mean I'm a bad person now pile on more shame. Right. <laughs> and then, and then we just, we're afraid to even connect with anybody because Maybe I'm not worthy of connecting with. Maybe I shouldn't. I should just be alone because clearly I'm I'm a total mess who can't do anything. You know, and it just compounds and compounds and compounds. It does. Well, and then for those of us who are entrepreneurs, oh boy, then <laughs> then it triggers the not good enough and the I'm not ready. I'm a fraud. <laughs> so then we go into this cycle, this old pattern of I need more information. I need to perfect my website. I need to do this or that. And yeah, it's like, it's just one big ball of mess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One of the, one of the things I've really, that I was lucky to have pointed out to me in the past few weeks. So two months ago, I went to this meditation retreat, not like fast forwarding to today, not two years ago, but I just went to this meditation retreat. And I said to the, I said to the guy who was leading it, who was amazing by the way, um, Lawrence Conlon, he's in Colorado. He's just absolutely amazing. And I said to him, I said, I'm, I'm so, I'm so fed up. I'm tired of thinking I'm the best thing in the world. And then I'm the worst thing in the world. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of thinking I can do anything. And then feeling like I can do nothing. Like I'm just tired of swinging. It feels like ego on both ends and I don't know how to get out of it. And he looked at me and he said, this is shame. This is shame because on one end you're the ultimate. And then on the other end, you're nothing. And both of those are true. But when we make it about ourselves, like you're saying, we, we, we make that story about ourselves, then it feels like this impossible sort of pendulum that we can't get out of, but that's actually the shame coming back in on us. And if we can stay with shame, stay with the shame of not being everything and stay with the shame of not being nothing, or maybe the shame of actually worrying that we are nothing, 
and that we are totally epic failures, you know, sitting with that and actually facing both possibilities and everything in between, then we, shame doesn't have as much power over us. Mm -hmm. But that takes, that takes a huge amount of strength to say that there's nothing wrong with me for feeling this way. And like you, like now talking about it and taking steps and saying, okay, well, maybe I can open the door on this a little bit. And instead of letting shame rule me and all of those thoughts be true, what if I say, okay, it's happening. I feel the swinging. I feel the pendulum, but that doesn't mean that I'm broken. I'm going to show up anyway and let people see that. Right. Because, well, and it's interesting how we tie our ego gets us to tie these things together. So like if our bank account is low, then we feel low. If it's high, then we feel high. Or like if our weight increases, then we, we feel bad about ourselves. And so it's like, we use these things, these external, these markers, and then we, um, it's like we have this strange relationship that, uh, we have to have something look a certain way before we are, um, we are allowed to feel good about ourselves. Yeah. And I, I was thinking about this last night. There was an episode for Pizza Hut on, or an episode, a commercial for Pizza Hut on TV. And it said something like, you know, we spent our childhood here. And I looked at my husband, who's not from this country. And I said, I actually did spend my childhood at Pizza Hut because every time I got an AZM report card, Pizza Hut would give me a personal pan pizza. And every time I read all the books on the book list at school, I'd get a personal pan pizza. And so it was like, when I meet these markers of success, I get rewarded. And I'm like, look at me. I got my personal pan pizza. Well, what about those kids who didn't, you know, like I learned that so inherently, but what about the kids who they were never going to hit those markers of success? How do they feel about themselves? They, I'm hoping that they found a sense of self that was way beyond those markers of success. Because at the end of the day, pizza, a personal pan pizza from pizza hut as a child, like might've been amazing, but it's really not the ultimate sign of success in life. Right. So, but hopefully people who are listening can see like, Oh wait, maybe I'm doing that with money. Like maybe money is my personal pan pizza. Like it's kind of silly. It's kind of silly. We have yeah. so much more beyond the reward that we think is going to that we think is going to say something about us. But it's just us trying to validate and prove ourselves over here when actually our self worth is over here and our self esteem and who we are is over here. We, that needs no validation. It needs no proof. It needs no argument. It just is. But that's a space of desire and acceptance. Mm -hmm. And this is the space of, well, I'm sorry I interrupted you. And I know I talk too much and I really shouldn't be doing this. And I know that, but you know, like it's, I'm constantly explaining and validating myself versus, yep, that's who I am. Take it or leave it. Yeah. Well, but I think that's so hard for us to do, to be able to um, get grounded enough or to be confident enough to just say, this is who I am and take or leave me. <laughs> we're, we're kind of, um, we're taught and we're socialized to, um, try to, um, fulfill other people's needs or desires or, or reach these external, um, uh, you know, have this kind of car or live in this area or, and, and so we're constantly, um, what's that word? Um, groomed mm. to feel like that's what we have to show up as. Yeah. It's so interesting. I've been listening to Alan Watts lately. And if, and if you don't know who he is, he's a philosopher. Um, and he, he was talking specifically yesterday in the car. I, I had like an hour long drive. So I'm listening to this talk and he's talking about materialism versus spirituality. And that's a conversation many of us have been in before. And it usually ends up being a conversation about how the material is spiritual. Mm -hmm. But he made a different distinction. He, he said that. He said, yeah, material is spiritual. And that we confuse the material and the abstract. So a car, a nice car, a nice house, a nice clothes is an abstract concept. Mm -hmm. But the material is right here. I'm wearing a shirt. I've got a jewelry. I'm holding a cup of water. You know, the material's right here, but the concept is where we get hung up. And so most of us are not actually in the moment of the material. We're not in the moment of the, the, exi the existence of what we desire. And so we're always searching for something 
this beyond what actually is. Mm -hmm. And this gets to the point where people say, well, if you can't enjoy what you have in your life, if you're not grateful for what you already have, you're not going to get more of it. And that sort of gets to the point that he's making there is that this is already here right now. This is where it's happening. But if we're not like, oh my gosh, look at the majesty of this teacup. Have you ever seen something so magnificent? Like, what? Where, you know, and be really full and present with it. Be fully here in this moment with this teacup. Then we're just lost in the mind. We're lost in the abstraction. And the miracle of life, the spiritual nature of life that we feel that sort of miraculous sense of wow in is right here, right now. Mm-hmm. We just think we're going to have it when we have the car, but that's, that's a thought. It's not real. No. And they've even shown, I, I don't know off the top of my head what the dollar amount is, but they've done some research around uh, how much income we make. And they found that there was a certain level of income that once we surpassed that, it didn't give us any more fulfillment. And I thought that was really, really fascinating because it wasn't that much money. And yeah, so, yeah, you're right. It's like we have this this concept or this perception that we're that we have in our head that we're trying to fulfill. And I think that it's kind of like the donkey and the carrot. You know, every time the the donkey steps forward, the carrot steps forward. Same thing with um, when we're looking at life through a material lens and and trying to fulfill these egoic desires as we're always chasing, and that will never end because it always, there's always going to be the next thing that we're trying to get to. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's what I'm playing with right now is how dare I believe that I get to say how it's going to (laughs) be like, how dare I shift, like shift the powers of the world. Like you did on your London trip where you're in between places and you're like, well, still here, still doing it. So I guess it's going to have to show up. You know, how dare we, how dare we think that we can influence the aspects of nature that seem beyond our influence, like money, like body weight, like relationship dynamics, like love as a concept, because love's a concept too, just like money, right? Like how dare we think we get to say how it goes. And I've been really playing with this and I see it. My, I'll share a story about my nephew. Probably shouldn't, but I'll share the story. (laughs) This kid, this kid is just, He's like, this is how it's going to be. This is how it's going to be. I'm going to, I'm going to, at 16 or 17, he's like, I'm going to join this company and redo all of their hiring processes and make them a couple million dollars. And I'm like, you're 16. You know nothing about business. And then he did it. (laughs) And I'm like, what? So then he gets into business school, of course. And then he's like, you know what? I'm going to model because I like modeling. I think I'm great at it. This kid takes two hours on the bus to get to a mark modeling because he's in the car, two hours to get to this shoot. And then three hours on the bus to get over here. And that's one way, three hours back. And he just does it because he's like, yeah, I'm going to be a model. I'm going to be great at it. Mm-hmm. And I can see all the adults in his life, right? Cause I've got the adults pregnant. We're all like, is he really good at that? Does he really think he can succeed at that? And I'm not sure if he should really, is this the best way to be spending his time? And no, is anybody going to tell him that maybe that's not really a good investment? And he's like, I'm sorry, I'm making my world. Yeah. Right. And so none of us even dare to do it. Cause we're all sitting here going, we don't believe you. And then we're like, because is he doing it? Because if he can do it, what does that mean about what we've been doing? Mm-hmm. And I think this for so many women in particular, this concept that we get to say, and now this is how it is. And now this is who I am. Mm-hmm. That that's so terrifying because it's not necessarily what we're like, he's a groom to do. And yet it's possible. Like it's, it's really about that level of love for self. And I think I talked in, in episode 107 about this, like I was using my business to try to prove something about me. Yes. And so I was like, well, if my business does great work and then it makes money, well, then I'm a worthwhile person. I was like, oh, and I saw during, you know, before our call last time, like, wow, what a horrible thing to do to my business. But I was basically like, I'm sorry, could you do, could you work harder? Could you prove something more? I really need you to give me this and give me this and give me this. And the business is like, I'm trying. Why don't you love me? You know, (laughs) like this horrible space. And I've realized in the last, you know, six months, eight months, like it's the opposite. It's saying, this is what I do. This is what I do in the world. Take it or leave it life, but I'm going to be great at it. And I'm going to be, you know, duly rewarded for it. So just get on board. And that feels scary, but it's the energy of this is me and I accept myself. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's interesting because it's like 
there's this whole thing where everybody's looking for their purpose, right? Everybody's, yeah. everybody's it, it, searching and, and it, it's like we feel like we want to just uh, have the flag that we can pop in the ground and say, I found it, here I am. But it it doesn't work that way, does it? <laughs> well, I'm, I have a slightly different view on purpose, so all those people, you should call me. Because um, <laughs> I actually do believe we can find our I, – I have a system that I use to get really clear on your purpose. Um, but what I've noticed, because I've worked with people now for five years on purpose, is that what people actually mean when they say I want my purpose is I want meaning in my life and to feel like I have meaning. Yeah. And that's a very different thing. It's a very different conversation. And so we'll go through this whole process of saying, well, here's your purpose. Are you happy now that you have it? And they're like, no, because now I don't know how to create meaning or what to do with it or what that means about how I'm supposed to show up every day. I'm like, well, that's a different, that's a different question. But the purpose is who you are. It's who you are when you walk in the room. It's who you are when you walked into life. It's, you know, it's who you will be before a job and after jobs. Like it's, it's so unrelated to doing its being. And that level of acceptance of, yeah, this is who I am. This is what I'm being. And my beingness has value in the world because I said it does, because I value my own beingness is really what it boils down to. It doesn't have to have value to anybody else because it just is, mm -hmm. and you can value it. But then there's the question of, well, how do I feel meaningful? And that's about how we take our beingness and love it and beingness and be compassionate with it and beingness and connect with other people. But we, when we connect with other people from a space of, can you validate me? And then we're not in a space of being. It's like our cup is empty. And so we're like, please come in. And then empaths get in a lot of trouble because they're looking for validation. But then they're like, no, I don't want your thoughts and you know, energy. And so then we're in this constant struggle of there's the pendulum swing. No, but I'm everything. And I don't really want to take on your stuff too. Yeah, but could you please validate me? Because I'm nothing. <laughs> and so we get trapped in this cycle. And it's like, oh, come on. Let me out of it. Like, let me out of the ride. Mm -hmm. um, but we fill ourselves up. We have to fill ourselves so fully that it's coming out from us. I think of it like a bubble. If I fill my bubble so fully, not a protective bubble, but just a bubble of what I believe, a bubble of how I've decided to be in the world, a bubble of what I think is how the world's going to be. My bubble's not going to have violence. Sorry. My bubble's not going to have insecurity. Too bad. <laughs> you know, is that, is that completely unattached from reality? Sure, but it's my reality. Right. And so when I create that bubble, guess what's going to happen? People want to hang out in it. People want to be around that bubble because they're like, oh, it feels better around you. I don't know why. I just feel better around you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they can feed off that. They can wade in it. They can leave it and go to somebody else's bubble. That's none of my business. It's just none of my business. My business is to keep my bubble filled with my own sense of self and belief. And that's really hard to do when the cup's empty and we're trying to take in validation. Mm. It's the same with money. It's the same with money. It is. It is. So it's like once you unravel one, it it feels to me like um, once I was on it, once I was able to unravel that money thing, the money shame, that I was kind of I was really freed up in all areas of my life, mm. which was nice, really nice. So you have an exercise that uh, you want to walk us through, or I mean, not walk us through, but you have something that uh, we can use in our lives. So is this a good time or? I'm um, sure. Let me think of one. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many and usually one becomes really apparent, but right now I'm like, Oh, what's the best one? I know. Um, right? I know. There, you know so what I think would be cool? Cause we were just talking about this bubble concept. It'd be really cool to define the bubble mm. because that's what this is really about. It's saying who I am, what I stand for. And it feels scary to then believe that we have the ability to hold that, but we do. And so, like, here's a, here's a great example, and then we'll get into the exercise. One of the things that I focus on is, like, what if my truth, what if what I want to see was as easy as saying my name? So I just practice it. Like, hi, I'm Alexis. I'm Alexis. I'm married to an incredible guy. I make $20,000 a month. I'm from Kent, Ohio. Tell me about you, mm -hmm. right? One of those things isn't true but you don't need to know which one. Right. <laughs> and so we just say it over and over and over. It's the money piece, but because <laughs> I am married to an incredible guy from Ohio. Um, <laughs> but you know, just saying it as easy as that, like, this is just, this is just who I am. And when all those feelings come up that don't feel like, Oh, but that's not true. Then we look at them. Then we look at them. So to, to grow that, that space of bubble, I think it's really fun to write a manifesto. Mm. And by manifesto, I mean, what, what do I stand for in the world? And 
many of us are not living what we stand for. Right. So if I stand for a world where everybody feels enough, then girl, it's time to get on board. Right. Then why am I letting myself not feel like I'm enough? So we write these things out. What do I stand for? I believe that everybody has inherent worth and value. Well, if that's the case, why do I think I don't? I believe that, um, everyone has the ability to love themselves and be loved by others. Okay. Why aren't I loving myself? Right? So writing these beliefs and then we can look at them and go, Oh, where can I stand in this more? Because the question is not whether you can stand in it. If you believe it, then it's yours to stand in. The question is why aren't we? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be a big, long story. It really doesn't. Um, just do it. Just choose to do it. Wake up every morning, read that list a hundred times a day. And, and just do it because when we, when we see what we actually believe, and I have one on my website, I actually don't even know how to find it on my website, but it's somewhere on there. It's like Lexus Pure slash manifesto. And it says everything that I believe. Oh, it's under free stuff. Um, you know, all these things that I believe about people and what's true in the world. But I got to read that every day to remind myself. And I think that's the invitation for all of us is to actually not go and look at what we need to do or look at, um, what techniques we could learn or look at like what other people are doing, but actually just say, what do I believe? Mm -hmm. And then remind ourselves of it over and over and over until we have the, until we have those breakthrough moments like you and I had where we start to live it. Sure. And it's a simple exercise, not what I was planning at all, but <laughs> filling up that bubble space is probably the most important thing we could do. Well, and I love what you, you always ref went back to, turning it in to yourself and saying, you know, am I actually living that? Because so many times we give other people permission to be themselves and just be, but then we're standing there, be, you know, looking at ourselves, holding ourselves up to a different judgment stick. <laughs> so I love that because yes, we can be, um, so kind and compassionate towards other people, but we also really want to do that for ourselves. And so I, I'm glad that you highlighted that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we have thoughts like, Oh, well, easy for them to do because they're rich, <laughs> you know, like look at the Kardashians. Well, easy for them to be ridiculous human beings who get whatever they want because they have money. No, they're ridiculous human beings who get whatever they want. Money has nothing to do with it. Like let them be, you know, at, but we don't gift ourselves that same. So we have these little judgments that if I, if I act a certain way, then I'm this, mm -hmm. right? I'm spoiled. I'm ridiculous. I'm ridiculous. I ask too much of the world. People aren't going to love me. I'm too pushy. I'm too bossy. I'm too insert any woman name that women call themselves. Right. And at the same time, we want that thing. Yeah. Well, you're not going to get both. You're not going to get what you want and what you don't want at the same time. Yeah. You can't, so, you can't pretend in, in your own house that you have all those things. And then when you go outside and talk to other people, just pretend, <laughs> just hide. Yeah. <laughs> or, and not, or not want them. Yes. Because if I'm all, if I'm all of a sudden really wealthy and successful and powerful, well, then that means I'm going to be a mega, a mega poo, you know, insert swear word here. Like, <laughs> and I had that and I was like, well, I can't, when I think about my two alternate futures, either I'm really poor and deeply committed to my spiritual practice, or I'm such a jerk because I'm wealthy and successful that I'm too selfish. And somebody called me out and said, tell me how the selfish jerk is going to save the world. And I was like, Oh, and so I wrote on it and I wrote on it and I wrote on it. And I realized that selfish person, it, she wasn't selfish because she's hurting other people. She was selfish because she knew what she was there to do. And she had such clear boundaries around that, that she just wasn't going to mess with anything else. Mm -hmm. But there's no charge around those boundaries. Yeah. When they're not coming from a place of defensiveness, they're coming from a place of self love. So again, this side is like validation defensive. I have to prove who I am. This side is I accept who I am. And so I can be in that space when they're coming from this place, there's no energy around the boundaries. Mm -hmm. It's just who I am. And, oh and over gosh, here, when you get to that place, it feels so good. It's yeah, so it's, good. It's not a thing. Yeah. It's just not a thing. And that's the bubble creation space, right? This is who I am. This is what I believe in. I don't have to argue about that with anybody. It's just what I've chosen because it's true for me. Mm -hmm. Like maybe next life, you know, maybe next life it'll be different, but right now this is just what it is. And I'm going to go with that. And Oh, there's so much more I want to say here, <laughs> but, this, but this exercise around really saying what you stand for 
and then looking at all the things you're assuming. Because if you're assuming that to be everything you want to be, that, that means you're going to be a horrible, nasty person who nobody likes, you're going to hold yourself back. Mm -hmm. So really look at that. Really look, is that true? And tell me how that person's going to save the world too, right? Like, tell me how that's the biggest gift. What's the gift of a self-centered person? What's the gift of, you know, all these things that we assume are negative mm -hmm. and, and really dig into those assumptions because they're holding, they're holding us back from what we actually want and what we know we're here to, to gift ourselves in the world. Yes. Oh my gosh. I just love these conversations with you because, uh, there, there's just, like you say, there's so much more we could talk about and there is so much too that we all can really dive in and be more introspective around these, these topics and these conversations because we are all on a journey of growth and, uh, I just love anything that is going to help us be more authentic, more ourselves, more, um, fully embodying who we are here to become. Yeah. So, so thank you, Alexis, for joining me today. This was the perfect way to celebrate 200 episodes. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And congratulations again. I, I'm so glad I was here with you and thank you so much. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Awakened Goddess Show. I hope you enjoyed today's guest and got something you can start using in your life right away. For more spiritual insights and to listen to more episodes, subscribe to The Awakened Goddess Show at theawakenedgoddess.com and discover wisdom that'll change your life.